Just confirm when it's started. Just waiting on confirmation. And we're live, Chair. Okay. okay, thank you, Victoria. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to this first meeting of the Planning Applications Committee for 2021. I hope under the circumstances, people have had a, a decent Christmas anyway, and take the opportunity to wish you a happy new year. Uh, uh, let's hope it's going to be a better one uh, than last year. Uh, and in saying that, let us uh, keep the thoughts with us of all those families and friends that have uh, been impacted by this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Thank you. But can I also uh, welcome the officers from the county? We've got officers from the county, if any members wish to ask some questions, um, particularly on item one, I think it is, uh, in regards, we've got county uh, flood officer, Sophie Wynne, and Joanne Archer and Karen Watkins from Highways. I did see somebody else, I thought, but I haven't got a name for them. Okay, anyway, um, for those people that are watching this, oh, hello, uh, Jonathan. Uh, well, sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can. Thank you. I'm, I'm one of the presenters. Let's write some more. Oh, okay then. Okay, thank you. Thank and, you. Um, OK, so we, we probably all know the rigmarole now with these virtual meetings. Um, but ju just to say for anybody that's watching this meeting uh, online, um, we are, it is going out live. It's also being recorded to be put out later um, on Facebook. Could I just remind members um, when, they're not, when they're not due to speak, like, they can turn their microphones off and also their um, cameras uh, or maybe uh, stop us getting any uh, feedback. Um, Councillor Brown, please. Thank you. Um, okay, so as I say, it, it is being recorded and will go out. Usual, usual thing, please, if you can indicate with the, the hand if you want to speak. Uh, and let me know and I'll put that list up so that I can see if anybody puts their hand up. Um, could I also remind people to make sure your phones are turned off or on silent and we'll make a move then, uh, which takes us on to item number two, which is to receive apologies. I think everybody's present. Can you confirm that, Victoria, please? Yeah, there are no apologies this time, Chair. Yeah, I think everybody's here as well. So, OK, item number three is to confirm the minutes of the meeting on the 8th of December. Uh, are members happy that, that they're correct? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I see no objections to that. OK, so that's agreed. Item number four is to receive any declarations of disclosable pecuniary and other interests in accordance with the Members' Code of Conduct, if they've not already been printed uh, in the agenda, or you may become aware of something, please let us know as soon as possible. Uh, I don't see any indications there, which, which case takes us on to item five, is any declarations of contact that members may have had with, with anybody. I don't see anybody, but can I can I just um, declare that I was contacted earlier by uh, Councillor Glass. Um, unfortunately, Councillor Glass isn't um, very well. Um, he was intending to speak tonight uh, on item number one. Um, 
but he did make he did want to make a point on that. I can I can maybe do that when we get to it, or the officers have been informed anyway. Okay, thank you. Item number six then takes us on to the applications where the public have indicated a desire to speak. Um, so straight away we go on to item number one. And just before just before Claire presents it, could I just check that the people that I've got to speak are Councillor Brown, Nicola Betts, Jonathan Adams, and was there a statement from somebody else, or is it just those three speakers, Victoria or Claire? Oh, sorry, I thought I was unmuted. The uh, statement from Nicola Betts will be read by... Um, let me just check. I'm sure that's the one that was forwarded to Wendy. Is that the one you have, Wendy? Chair, I've got a statement from Nikki Fentiman. Yeah, this is what's good. This is why I want to be clear on this. On my list of speakers, I've I received got the same Brown, contact who's... information for both. And uh, Nicola Betts, I don't know whether she's in attendance. Let me just check. And Jonathan Adams, who I know is in attendance. And there was a, we had a submission from Nikki Fentiman, but I didn't know whether that was to be read out or not. That's the one I'm re reading out, Chair. OK, so I'm assuming then that Nicola Betts was intending to be here. OK, right. Um, I I'll just ask if, if Nicola's here, can she somehow indicate? I can't see her name anywhere. Um, I think there's been some confusion over the the name of the person who was going to speak because I've got Nicola Betts written down but someone sent me Nicola Fentiman's email with her statement so I think it might be okay one person sorry about that chair okay right um okay so the, our first item is uh, Black Horse Road Claire if you'd like to make your the presentation please OK, Chair, thank you. I'll just share my screen. OK, this application is for the erection of 204 dwellings, site access, community building, allotments, orchard, open spaces and park provision, cycle and pedestrian routes, landscaping and associated highway works and infrastructure at the former Hawkesbury Golf Course. This application is for phase one of the whole site and an outline application will be submitted for the rest of the site in the near future. Objections have been received as detailed on the agenda, raising issues such as increased traffic, lock, lack of school places and GP provision, impact on wildlife and ecology, loss of greenbelt land, noise pollution, presence of mine shafts, increased overlooking and flooding. In terms of the principle of development, the site was previously in the Greenbelt, but was removed as part of the Borough Plan under Policy DS7. Policy DS5 for the Borough Plan refers to a number of sites that will be allocated for residential development and associated infrastructure. And this application site forms part of allocation HSG12. Under that allocation, there is to be provision for at least 380 dwellings. This current application is for 204. An application is expected to be submitted for the rest of the site in the near future. However, this current application is only considering the proposed 204 dwellings and cannot consider any part of the allocation which is outside the application site boundary. An illustrative master plan, as shown on the screen, has been submitted at this stage to show that most of the requ requirements of policy HSG12 can be accommodate accommodated on the site. Therefore, it is considered that the principle of developing this site for a mix of residential, community uses and open space has been established for the allocation of the site in the borough plan and the relevant policies within it. In terms of affordable housing, 
policy H2 of the borough plan requires 25% of all new developments to be affordable on sites of 15 dwellings or more. A total of 51 affordable units are proposed, which equates to 25% and is therefore acceptable. Of the affordable units, 12 are one bed, four of which are bungalows, 19 are two bed, 17 are three, and three are four bed. The housing team have confirmed they have no objection to this housing mix. The affordable housing SPD recommends a 10 year split of 74% social affordable rent to 26 intermediate housing, which will be provided on the site. The affordable housing SPD also states that to promote inclusive communities, affordable housing should not be identifiable from other forms of housing within a development and should be distributed evenly amongst market housing. The SPD also provides appropriate cluster sizes which depend on the size of the development. For sites of 200 to 500 dwellings, it recommends three to eight clusters with a maximum of 15 units in each. It is considered that this is met as five clusters are provided which are spread evenly throughout the site and the affordable houses are identified as, as the red units on the plan. There is one cluster of 18 units. However, taking into account the, the layout of the site, the clustering of 18 units is sensible as the cluster forms a reasonably sized development parcel. And as the figure is marginally above the maximum figure set out, officers consider that this is acceptable. Planning policy have no objections on, the, on that basis. In terms of general market housing, the strategic housing marketing assessment indica indicates there is greatest need in the borough for three bedroom properties, followed by two bedroom properties and then four. The proposal will provide one bed properties at 3% of the total, two bed properties at 38, three bed properties at 48% and four bed at 11. It is considered that the proposed provision is in general accordance with the, with the SMA and therefore acceptable. In relation to visual amenity, Neat and Bedworth Borough Council commissioned a landscape character assessment in 2012, which was updated in 2017 and has been used to inform the borough plan. The landscape strength of the site was considered moderate and the landscape condition considered poor for the area. The landscape character assessment update has suggested a number of guidelines for new development within HSG 12, which includes using woodlands to soften views of the urban edge, creating a high quality frontage to new development along the canal, variation of built form of the new urban edge, for example, by, by um, varying building heights, house types and materials, and incorporating existing water bodies and public rights of way within the development. The concept plan SPD for HSG 12 states that the western edge will add a linear woodland parallel to the railway in order to reinforce existing outgrown hedgerows and to screen views of the industrial estate. A landscape master plan has been submitted with the application, which shows an area of woodland planting to part of the western boundary. The majority of that boundary, however, is shown as wildflower wild grassland. Notwithstanding the details shown on that plan, a condition is suggested that full landscaping plans, including the planting species along the western boundary, is submitted. The proposed built development is outward facing in relation to the existing residential development the proposed open space and the proposed allotment, which provides visual interest and a positive relationship between the different uses. The primary north-south spine road is designed as a boulevard flanked by semi-detached and link detached houses. The dwellings are arranged to clearly define the line of the street. A similar approach is taken to the east-west primary link road. The dwellings are predominantly two-storey apart from four bungalows. Materials consist of brick with some render and other details such as canopies, chimneys, sill detailing and bay windows. It is considered that this adds interest to the site. A materials plan has been submitted which proposes brick walls where private gardens adjoin roads and close bordered timber fencing out to air which is considered acceptable in terms of visual amenity. Clearly the proposal would have an impact on the landscape character of the area but it is not considered that this would be significantly detrimental. The built development would partly be seen in context to the existing residential development and the industrial estate to the west. 
Views from the public footpath to the northern part of the site would be of open space with residential properties beyond. Turning to residential amenity, <coughs> a noise assessment has been submitted with the application. <coughs> Excuse me. This has involved carrying out noise measurements at a number of locations along the westernmost part of the site. The most obvious noise source in the area is the Coventry to Neaton Railway, which runs mostly on an embankment parallel to the western boundary so along there. This is used by passenger trains and some freight. The assessment found that, that where the trains pass on the embankment, the resulting noise exposure levels were acceptable on the development, even allowing for a planned increase in passenger services. The railway embankment provides significant acoustic screening of any industrial noise, just noise from vehicle movements and unloading. The Council's environmental health team have no objection and request a condition for a noise attenuation scheme, including glazing, ventilation, orientation and boundary treatment details. In relation to the existing properties, distance standards are met in compliance with the Sustainable Design and Construction SPD. In terms of inside the site, distant standards are generally met. Plot 92 has detached garages on both side boundaries, which can lead to the creation of a sense of enclosure. However, in this case, the garages are staggered, which is considered reduces the impact on that plot. There is also an element of buyer beware. Plots 45 and 46 each have a bedroom window that face a blank wall of plot 31 at a distance of about nine metres, where distance standards normally would require 12 and 14 metres. However, these rooms are shown to be served by an angled window, as shown on there, which means there are views past plot 31, which result in a better standard of amenity. <clears throat> in terms of highway safety, access is proposed off Stockley Road, Sefton Drive, and the position of the access is in accordance with policy HSG12 and the concept plan SPD. The entrance to the site at the junction with Sefton Drive would take the form of a junction inside the site boundaries, linking to Stockley Road and the new primary routes in the site. The character of the primary road is marked visually by the boulevard treatment with verges and tree planting. Secondary roads are short cul-de-sacs, clearly differentiated by the, from the main routes. The mews and private drives would be denoted by alternative road surface materials or banding to, to clearly differentiate their hierarchy. County highways have no objection to the proposed layout, subject to conditions. In terms of parking provision, one space per dwelling is provided for each one bed property, two spaces for each two bed property, two spaces for each smaller three bed property and two spaces plus a garage for each three and four bedroom properties. The council currently does not have any saved car parking standards and this level of provision is considered acceptable. In addition, 18 spaces are proposed to serve the proposed community building. A transport statement of common ground between the agent's transport consultant and county highways was submitted as part of the borough plan process. The statement of common ground detailed how highways impacts were considered and also incorporated a detailed transport assessment that assessed both highway capacity and barrier downtime impacts at a level crossing of Black Horse Road. Prior to the rerunning of the modelling, advice was sought from both Network Rail and the County Public Transport team as to the future of the level crossings in terms of barrier downtime resultant of the Knuckle Phase 2 project. A detailed rail study was also undertaken, which advised that by 2031, there could be an increase in barrier downtime from 12 minutes per hour to 17 and a half minutes. The Statement of Common Ground agreed that the inclusion of the application site and the revised barrier downtime information would mean that the local highway network operated within capacity. County Highways agreed that impacts to the Black Horse Road level crossing and wider vehicle impacts from the development could be mitigated or were not severe. There was detailed discussions at the examination hearing on HSG12 and ultimately the inspector concluded that there was no reason why the site should not be allocated, having regard to all the, of the evidence submitted. A transport assessment has been submitted with this application. This, de this details the modelling that has been undertaken to assess the traffic impact of the development on the local and strategic highway network. This has included assessments of a level crossing of Black Horse Road, the Black Horse Road Traffic Signal Junction, the Longford Road Oakmore Road Junction, the School Lane Coventry Road Junction, the Longford Road Corridor and Junction 3 of the M6. 
In relation to Junction 3 of the M6, Highways England had concerns that, that the community of impact of this application and allocated growth within the adopted local plans would have an impact on the safe and efficient operation of the M6 Junction 3 and the M6 Main Line. <clears throat> this concern focused on the M6 southbound off-slip, where the community of impact would result in queuing on the slip road and back onto the M6 in future year assessments. This raised significant safety concerns which required mitigation. To identify a solution, the Highways Agency, so Highways England, County Highways and Common City Council Highways have worked together to resolve the issue. Consequently, a scheme known as the M6 Junction 3 Interim Scheme has been developed by Warwick County Council and will signalise the B4113 arm of the junction and provide widening of that approach, as well as additional stacking capacity. The mitigation scheme has been tested within the Neat and Bedworth Parameters model and a junction impact model. Based on Highways England's assessment and appraisal of the modelling and associated output, it has been demonstrated that the scheme would mitigate the operational and safety concerns identified by Highways England. The scheme would be develop, delivered by Warwick County Council no later than 2026. To enable the scheme to come forward and be implemented, Section 106 contributions will be requested from developments and allocations which have a primary or secondary impact upon the junction based on the modelling outputs. This contribution is currently being calculated by the county based on the impact of this development. The, applica the applicant has agreed in principle to pay a contribution. Highways England have no objections, subject to conditions and 106 contributions. County Highways have also requested highway capacity improvements along the Hawkesbury Longford, Longford Road corridor, including the, the provision of a cycleway and junction mitigation schemes at the Baton Road Industrial Estate Access, Black Horse Road Junction, Longford round, Roundabout and carriageway widening and a cycle route to connect the development site to existing infrastructure. These 106 contributions are currently being calculated by County Highways based on the impact of the development. The applicant has agreed in principle to pay a contribution. The MPPF outlines the need for, for planning to promote, to, to promote walking, cycling and public transport and to make the fullest possible use of these. There are three public footpaths which currently cross the whole allocated site of HSG 12, which provide links between Hawkesbury and Bedworth. Public footpath B36 is within the application, this application site and runs along the western boundary, parallel to the railway and adjacent to the southwest boundary. A range of schemes are proposed which should improve access accessibility to and from the site by sustainable forms of transport and therefore reduce the reliance on the private car. A series of footpaths and cycleways are proposed within the site which would link into the existing highway network. These generally run north to south and east to west and provide key links to and through the proposed open space and link through to the northern part of the site through to the Miners Welfare Park and Bedworth Town Centre beyond. The future application for the rest of the site will also have a connection to National Cycle Route 52. Cycle path links are also proposed to the allotments and community building. The Borough Council's park section have no objection to the proposals. The concept plan SPD identifies a bridge crossing con and containing um, pedestrian and cycle routes over the retained central pool, which would run from north to south. However, the plans submitted do not propose a bridge and instead propose the footpaths and cycleways around the pool, as indicated there. The concept plan provides guidance on the delivery of the development principle set out in the adopted borough plan for the site and are intended to provide a visual representation of, of requirements as well as other key elements and are, so are conceptual in nature. They are not intended to be exhaustive and show all required elements. The SPD does state that alternative solutions and land use arrangements may come forward as part of the application process. The agent has submitted supporting information for not including the bridge. In terms of ecology, the pond and area around it would be valuable wildlife habitat. Following discussions with the Parks Department, it was agreed to enable some pedestrian access at a viewing area on the south side, but to deter pedestrian intrusion around the rest of the pond by pulling the proposed foot and cycle path away from it. A bridge across the pond would result in people encroaching nearer and over the pond, which would inevitably threaten the wildlife habitat. The agent also states that the proposed foot cycle path would allow level access around the pond for all users, including less able and parents with buggies, 
and also with our views of the pond without encroaching too close and protecting the wildlife habitat. They state that even a ramped bridge would not be suitable for all users. The, the agent has also pointed out that the proposed landscaping scheme, scheme has been carefully drawn up in liaison with officers and it is considered that a footbridge is an unsuitable feature in this wildlife habitat setting. It is also considered that the footbridge would detract from the nearby canal foot and cycle bridge that would come forward in the master plan area. Officers consider that these are sufficient reasons and given that footpaths are providing around the pool and still provide suitable links, it is not considered that the mission of the bridge is significant. Users would still be able to travel north and south circling the pool. It could also be argued that the mission of the bridge is marg marginally better in wildlife terms to not have people crossing a bridge across the centre of the pool. Planning policy have confirmed they are satisfied with this justification provided by the agent. A viewing area is proposed at the central pool, which the parks team have no objection to, subject to further details of the fencing around it and position of benches, which is covered by a condition. The site is in close proximity to, to a bus route and the nearest bus stops are on Black Horse Road. The scheme also provides the opportunity for a circular bus route through the site. Policy TC3 of the Borough Plan states that any new residential development should be within 1,200 metres walking distance of a district or local centre. The site is within 1,150 metres on the local centre at Coventry Road School Lane, which therefore meets this requirement. This policy also states that new residential development should be within eight metres motor vehicle drive to a district centre. The nearest centre is within, within the borough is Balkington and this is approximately nine minutes drive away. The site is also approximately seven to eight minutes drive from Bedworth Town Centre. In addition, a Arena Park shopping centre, which is allocated as a major district centre in Coventry City Council's local plan, is approximately eight minutes drive away from the site. In addition to the residential development on the site, a number of other uses are proposed in accordance with the requirements of policy HSG12 and the concept plan SBD. These include a community building that will provide a flexible space that can be used for a range of uses that may even include in part retail or a cafe use. This is to be sited to the southwest of the site, which means it is well located to serve the new development and the existing residents. This is to be a single storey building and provide approximately 185 square metres of floor space. A condition has been added requiring details of the long term management and maintenance of this building and use to be submitted and details regarding the management company provisions are included in a 106 agreement. Councillor Hancock's mentioned earlier that Councillor Glass had been in touch and made comments regarding the, this application. His comments are that um, in terms of the building, um, if, my, if committee are minded to approve the application, that the applicant should be um, encouraged to discuss the use of the community building with the Hawkesbury Village Residents Association. To the northwest of the community building, an area of land is designated as a allotment with facilities such as a communal, communal building and composting area. Parks have requested that full details of the allotment building are submitted, which has been covered by condition 25. A community orchard is also proposed between the allotments and community building. As with the community building, the long term management of the allotments and orchard can be dealt with through conditions and a section 106 agreement. The parks team have requested that details of a planting plan for the orchard are submitted, which has been included as condition 31. <clears throat> the application proposes both formal and informal public open space and the location of this has been influenced by existing site features. The open space provided on this application site will tie into the wider site as illustrated on the submitted master plan and in accordance with the requirements of HSG 12 and the concept plan SPD. In terms of the formal open space, an area for a BMX track is provided as part of this application and the condition is added for its de detailed design. This will form part of the future community park to the northern part of the allocation, but ensure some facilities are available for residents of this part of the site. The health and safety executive have commented that the proposed BMX track is within the inner middle and consultation zone of the site previously operated by Pima Energy, which is a major hazard site. They would object if it was located within the inner zone, but would find it acceptable in the middle middle zone but have suggested a condition that restricts its use to no more than 100 people. 
The location of the BMX track is indicative only, and the agent has confirmed that it only needs to be pulled in slightly to take it out of the inner zone and fully into the middle zone. A condition has been added requiring full details of the BMX track, including sighting of the track, including areas for queuing and spectating, details of its size, which should be no more than 300 metres in length, and landscaping to be provided around the edges and within the track. The design of the track should then limit the number of people that can use it at any one time. A further condition has also been added, which prevents it be, be, being used by any club being based in association with the track and for any organised competitive use. Towards the south, a local park is to be provided. This will include a multiplayer tower, swing, seesaw, activity area and a toddler multiplayer area. The parks team have stated that they have full general support for the application and believe it will be a high quality development and an attractive place to live. In relation to flooding and drainage, the MPPF requires that considerations given to the potential impact of flooding on new development, whilst also ensuring that flood risk is not increased elsewhere as a result of it, and sets out a sequential risk-based approach to the location of the, de of the development to steer this away from the areas at highest risk. The site is within flood zone one and therefore has a low level of fluvial flood risk. In terms of surface water drainage, there is some evidence at the southwest of the waterlogged. It is estimated that approximately seven hectares of the site drains towards the southwest corner with no obvious outfall. It is assumed drainage is ultimately achieved through a combination of infiltration both to ground and into the public storage system. The proposed surface water drainage strategy makes use of existing site features, including the central water course and ponds, and a series of additional sustainable drainage systems, i.e. SUDs, and are proposed throughout the site to manage surface water drainage. The county's flood risk management team have no objection subject to conditions. In terms of contamination and ground stability, a geovironmental assessment has been submitted with the application. Due to the site's coal mining history, a significant amount of prep work has been undertaken to understand the ground conditions of the site area. The assessment includes a coal mining report from the Coal Authority, which according to its records confirms that within 20 metres of the boundary, there are four mine entries. This information was supplemented by further research, which confirmed that 18 shafts have been recorded and eight have been backfilled. Site works undertaken in summer 2019 comprised trial pitting, deep drilling and rotary drilling together with coal mine shaft probing and monitoring visits. Exploratory holes were located across the site to provide geotechnical parameters for the proposed new development and adjacent to um, potential sources identified from the death study and to determine the location and depth of the coal workers and mine shafts. All 18 coal shafts identified in the study were probed, with the exception of three which were sent in, which were sent in the pond on the site. However, these have still been probed around the outside of the existing ponds. Of the nine shafts which were encountered, only one was capped. The Coal Authority have confirmed they are satisfied that a thorough assessment of for, former coal mine activity has been undertaken for the application and notes that the site layout has been informed by the presence of mine entries. They subsequently have no objection, subject to condition covering submission of an approved scheme of treatment works for the mine entries on site and implementation of those remedial works. In terms of contamination, the geo-environmental assessment identified elevated levels of contaminants and ground gases and subsequently proposes remediation. Environmental health have no objection, subject to the imposition of the standard contaminated land conditions. In relation to air quality, an air quality impact assessment has been submitted with the application. This assessment considers the impact associated with, with the whole allocated site and not just this current application in order to take into account the impacts of both schemes. It also takes into account other committed developments. The site is close to an air quality management area, area declared by Coventry City Council. The development will lead to changes in vehicle flows on local roads, which may impact on air quality at existing residential properties. The new residential properties may also be subject to the impact of emissions from the adjacent road and railway network. The assessment finds that concentrations of nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter will re remain below the relevant objectives at all receptors with or without the proposed development. 
the impact of local road traffic and railway emissions on the air quality for residents living in the development have been shown to be acceptable at the worst case locations assessed, with concentrations being well below the air quality objectives. In relation to construction, works have the potential to create dust and during construction, but they're necessary to apply a package of mitigation measures to minimise dust emissions. With these measures in place, it is expected that any impacts would not be significant. Environmental Health are satisfied with the findings of the assessment, have no, no objection subject to conditions, covering a dust management plan, electric vehicle charging points are provided, and that all gas fire boiler installation should be a specified standard. In terms of ecology, ecology assessment and arboricultural assessment have been submitted with the application. Habitat and species surveys have been undertaken for the whole allocation area and confirm that the entire site is not subject to any statutory ecological designations. A series of habitats and species surveys were commissioned, including badger, water vole, otter, reptiles, bats and great crested newts. A walkover field study was undertaken to assess the habitats and flora of the site, which noted semi-improved grassland, tree groups and scattered trees, dense scrub and tall, and, and, sorry, and dense scrub. Other potential ecological habitats include four ponds and a drainage ditch. The species surveys indicated there, are, there was no evidence of badger, waterfowl, et, um, otter or reptiles. Bat surveys identified the presence of different bat species foraging or commuting around the area. The majority of bat activity was noted, noted to be in association with the central and northern ponds and eastern boundary canal corridor, corridor, western boundary scrub and grassland to the east and south of the site. A tree survey indicated that five had low bat roosting potential and one with moderate bat roosting potential. A total of 28 water bodies were identified within 500 metres of development site boundary and seven were assessed for their suitability to support great crested newts. The pond to the east of the site was identified as having a small great crested newt po uh, population. The report makes a number of recommendations for biodiversity mitigation and enhancements measures, which includes the installation of bat, bird and, bow and owl boxes and native tree and scrub planting. The northern part of the site, which will be retained as natural open space, will assist in boosting the biodiversity of the site. In order to comply with the MPPF and to ensure the development does not have a negative impact on biodiversity, biodiversity impact calculations have been carried out. Biodiversity is always treated in sequential tests, with avoidance being the preferred methodology, followed by mitigation first, off-site and then off-site. The calculations carried out show a net gain in biodiversity. The net gain does rely on a significant contribution coming from reed bed creation in two of the retained ponds, but this planting is dependent on the depth of the ponds. These de details have not been submitted and therefore the park team have requested a condition that further details are submitted to establish the depth of, it, of the retained pools to inform whether reed plant planting in, in them will be of benefit to their biodiversity value. Those findings would inform a detailed planting plan. In relation to archaeology, an archaeological assessment has been submitted with the application and has concluded that there are potential remains of buildings and industrial structures which are of local importance to the site. These features include two canal basins which were used to load coal from the nearby coal pits onto barges on the Coventry Canal. Other buildings associated with the need to support industrial heritage would have been present in the area and could include warehouses and other ancillary structures. While it is probable that archaeological deposits may have been destroyed across parts of the site, there does remain the potential for previously unknown deposits. County archaeology has therefore um, suggested a condition that requires further work to be carried out. In relation to planning obligations, a number of condition, uh, contributions have been requested as detailed on the screen for things such as education, plain open space, highways mitigation, healthcare, sports provision and police infrastructure. The applicant has agreed to these contributions. In conclusion, the site is allocated as, as a strategic housing site in the borough plan and will provide housing and other social and leisure facilities. The potential impacts of the development in relation to the use of the land, residential immunity, visual immunity, highway safety, flood risk and drainage, contamination, ecology and archaeology have all been considered. The assessment has subsequently shown there will be no adverse impact in some instances.
However, where potential adverse impacts are identified, it would be possible to mitigate against these through the use of planning obligations and conditions. The recommendation is therefore one of approval, subject to conditions and the completion of a legal agreement. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Claire. We'll hopefully let you have time to get your breath back after that. Um, I don't think at this point the county officers, unless they've got anything else to put forward, I think they're here just to answer questions really on what it is. But um, if they do, then put your hand up and I'll, I'll let you make your comments. Okay. In which case, if we can move on to the, the speakers. The first speaker we have is Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, the, my, my, I'm objecting to this uh, application uh, to represent the views of residents who uh, live in Exhall and the Coventry Road immediately adjoins to the north of this development effectively. Um, I've also represented the views of residents in Hawkesbury who've contacted me about this. Um, effectively, um, we have a development here which is going in in advance of the infrastructure that's really necessary to serve it. Um, as we know, the site was added into the borough plan at the last minute. There are only two points of access into the village, and both of them are severely compromised. Um, the main access via Black Horse Road, as we know, is affected by the rail crossing, and the alternative access via the canal bridge is compromised due to the width of the bridge and also developments that are now taking place within Coventry immediately adjacent to the canal. Um, the schools and doctor surgeries referred to uh, don't actually fall within the borough contrary to the HSG 12 SPD plans and so it doesn't matter how much payment the developers give to the council to mitigate it, it doesn't actually mitigate it as such. Um, you know, the, the schools that are in Coventry have got no requirement to accept children from the borough and the nearest secondary school to this development is Ash Green, meaning that children either have to travel by car or walk or cycle along Black Horse Road, across Coventry Road and down School Lane at peak traffic times. Um, when they get to the Coventry Road and School Ro Lane Junction, there's no pedestrian function on the traffic lights here to allow them to cross safely. County Council's highways officers have advised me that they cannot modify this the lights at this junction to permit a pedestrian function uh, because of the effect it'll have on traffic queuing in the area. In other words, the road networks are already at capacity, so it's not really sustainable. And we, we've talked about the possibility, or we've heard about the possibility of uh, improvements to Coventry Road and improvements to Junction 3 of the M6 from 2026. Now that's five years hence, so the people that move into these houses for five years will be stuck with the system as it is. You know, it's not infrastructure led. Um, also, the residents view that the traffic data that's used to justify this application to be outdated. They've carried out their own survey in January and February this year, uh, before COVID, uh, assisted by drone, drone cameras, and these showed significant disruption to traffic trying to access along Black Horse Road because of the level crossing and because of the limitations of the traffic lights and the saturation of traffic on Coventry Road. Um, they, they measured uh, 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 around um, 490 vehicles within the hour that they checked at peak times. Um, and that's without accounting for delays due to the barriers, the traffic lights, um, and whether you, know, you get days when there's problems on the Coventry Road. Um, so we, we're going to go ahead here if this gets approved with a development that will ultimately increase the size of Hawkesbury by 50% in terms of housing numbers um, with no realistic infrastructure uh, improvements to allow access in and out apart from out to Coventry Road. Um, we've got a situation where Coventry are building immediately to the south at Hawkesbury Manor which is going to compromise even further access by the canal bridge and uh, allow more traffic into the village across the Coventry the canal for people that are living in Coventry that want to get to the M6 Junction 3. One other thing I would mention on this is that the 
uh, traffic surveys and the traffic thing has been taken looking at this development in isolation. Um, we shouldn't really be viewing it like that because we've also tonight looking at an application for School Lane that's going to add another 133 houses to the same road network and the cumulative effect yeah, of this has not yeah, been measured. I think, I think I can hear the timer going off. Victoria, was that the timer? It was. Okay. Well, uh, 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 all, I would add, all I would add, Chair, is that I repeatedly asked for this. Councillor Brown, just finish your sentence and then... I, 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 I was finishing my sentence, if you allow me, Chair. I was just to say that I repeatedly asked for this at the Borough Plan time. I was told it would, be, it would happen, that we would get cumulative traffic effect information. We haven't had it yet. Thank okay, you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, yeah, I do have to apologise. I didn't... Um, I didn't make it clear our normal process. I know Councillor Brown knows it anyway, is that speakers do get three minutes um, to speak, um, followed by uh, any points of clarification. Thank you, Chair. Um, do, me do members have any points of clarification? Councillor Lloyd. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with a lot of what Councillor Brown is saying. Um, but is Councillor Brown, are you saying that Warwickshire County Council uh, highways authorities have got the uh, uh, traffic implications in that area wrong? Um, uh, I'm not saying they've got the traffic implications wrong in themselves, but they've been asked to assess the traffic implications of the development in isolation. What we've asked for, because all of these developments give access onto the same stretch of road, is that the cumulative um, effect of the developments was assessed because it's rather like um, a, a jigsaw. If, if you look at each piece in isolation, it perhaps doesn't mean, mean, mean a great deal, but when you put them together, you can get a completely different picture than you get when you look at one particular piece. And I, I repeatedly asked for this at the Borough Plan hearing stage and subsequent, and was assured by the then Head of Planning that this would be done. Um, it hasn't yet been done. So we're effectively looking at one piece of the jigsaw uh, and, try, and trying to extrapolate from that. And when we're looking at this development, which is, uh, we admit is only part of the, the site, it's a bit like being asked to approve a development of a Zeppelin hangar when you're being asked to consider the doors only. Chair, uh, I'm sorry, you didn't answer the question, um, I don't think. I mean, the question I was asking, Councillor Brown, you spoke um, at long length um, uh, about the traffic uh, study that's been done, uh, which we know has been done by the developers and then submitted to Warwickshire County Council. And Warwickshire County Council have said that they don't have a problem with that traffic survey. Uh, so, do, you, do you think Warwickshire County Council are wrong? Uh, uh, I'm not saying they're wrong at all. What, what I'm saying is that the residents have carried out uh, their own authoritative survey and we know that surveys carried out by the residents in the Exhall area have been accepted by the, uh, the borough planners as valid evidence so we know they've been carried out correctly and what I'm saying is that they've perhaps measured the, the, the thing at peak time which is when most people are traveling and when children will be going to school and things and and they've they've come to a more traffic intensive conclusion. Thank you Chair, I'll, uh, I'll ask Warwickshire County Council uh, yeah. a similar question yeah. when I get to the page. To suggest once we get into the uh, the debate part of it, it, uh, it may be a question that can be answered by the county highways people. Thank you, um, Councillor Lloyd. If you can take your hand down, is there any other points of clarification to Councillor Brown? No. In which case, um, Wendy, I think it's the statement by Nikki Fentiman. Then, yes, Chair. Thank you. As a resident of Hawkesbury Village, I have attended all the initial meetings at our village hall held by the building company. Having seen and heard their plans, I still have major concerns. This led to myself being one of the residents who helped gain a petition with over 800 signatures from other concerned residents. We are a very unique village. Our boundaries are set by a railway line with a crossing and canal with a weak humpback bridge. Due to this, we only have two ways in and out with these features at either end of our village. This has and does cause our own unique traffic issues. 
The railway crossing can be down for a length of time, break down or need serving, leaving us with one route out of the village with a weak bridge. Given that we have a large volume of industrial units, they can have sizeable lorries which then have no choice other than to use the weak bridge. Since the new housing estate was built off Grange Road, the traffic has been higher through our village. We organised a drone to take aerial photos to show the impact of the railway crossing both when open and closed. This showed that the traffic can queue up from the humpback bridge end of the village along Iron Bridge Way, Black Horse Road. This is not helped by the traffic lights at the top of Black Horse Road and the volume of traffic. The building application highlights local schools. However, the schools highlighted are not within the catchment area as they are within Coventry, not Warwickshire. The application also suggests that the traffic flow is therefore via the exit of the Humpback Bridge into Coventry. This is not correct. Most children attend school within the Warwickshire County Council catchment area. This means they have to leave the village via Black Horse Road and the railway crossing. Given that our schools are not local, nor on any bus routes, as across Bedworth a high volume of children are taken to school via car. I have major concerns that our roads will not cope with the new volume of traffic. Although the application still refers to possible road improvements, the major issue of having a railway crossing and a weak bridge at either end of the village is never addressed. The site itself is planning on having only one access road into the village via Sefton Drive. Not all houses on this road have off-street parking and therefore cars can be parked on this road. This road was not built with the volume of new traffic this site would cause and again this is not addressed within the application. Sefton Drive leads to Stockley Road and Black Horse Road. Black Horse Road already has calming measures plus very limited off-street parking. The end via the railway crossing has a sign to advise not suitable for HGVs. How is the road meant to cope with the initial building traffic and later the increased traffic, which will have no other way out of the new housing estate? Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much, Wendy. Um, which then takes us on to Jonathan Adams. Jonathan, when you're ready, the clock will start. Good evening. My name is John Adams. I'm a technical planning and I'm the planning agent for the applicant. This application is for 204 dwellings and community uses in the west part of the Hawkesbury Golf Course site, which is allocated in the borough plan for at least 380 dwellings. The layout is very similar to the illustrative SPD concept plan regarding the distribution and quantum of development parcels and community uses, and therefore complies with the borough plan. The proposal is laid out to connect to the wider site. An outline application for the wider site will be submitted later this year, and of course will be considered by this committee. We have held regular detailed discussions with officers and stakeholders long before and during the application process included with planning, open space, landscape, ecology, drainage and highway officers. As a result, we have reduced the number of dwellings on this application from 226 to 204. The application scheme will deliver a wide range of community uses and open spaces, including 51 affordable homes, a community building, and as requested by Councillor Glass, the applicant will discuss its uses with the Hawkesbury Village Residents Association. There will be allotments, community orchard, large areas of formal and informal open space, a BMX track that will form part of the community park. There will be a local park including children's play equipment, habitat enhancements including the retention and creation of ponds, new native tree and scrub planting and retention of the northern areas natural open space. There will be biodiversity net gain, there will be new and enhanced footpaths and cycle paths, £900,000 towards schools, contribute, uh, schools enhancements, £26,000 towards library and public rights of way and road safety initiatives, £452,000 towards healthcare services, and £480,000 towards sports and leisure facilities. 
and a contribution towards Junction 3M6. Officers fully support the layout, siting and design of the development, connections and open spaces. All officers and technical consultees support the application. There are no technical constraints that prevent the application from coming forward. And the landowner has identified a delivery partner for the first phase of this development for this application to ensure prompt delivery as per the council's housing trajectory. The site is in a sustainable location with good access to Bedworth by foot, bicycle or bus. And the application is supported by Warwickshire and Coventry Highway Authorities and Highways England. And just in response to some comments, the, the level of support in highway modelling and information and evidence um, did take into account um, all of the allocated sites. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. I think I heard, I think I heard the egg timer go off. It's very, sorry, it's very faint. I'm having the job hearing it. But That's okay. Sorry, I think you was at the time, Matt. Oh, yeah. It was, Chair. Okay. Thank, you. Thank uh, you. Are there any points of clarification? No. Okay. We we. Uh, that's all the speakers and statements. So, um, Claire or the county officers, at this point, have you got any comments to make on anything that's been said so far? I haven't, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'll assume the county will just respond to questions from the committee in which case then uh, so that we I can enable debate to take place can I move the recommendation which is as printed uh, which is to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed is that seconded seconded chair Yeah, OK, thank you, Councillor. OK, in, in which case uh, it's open to the committee to debate and then uh, make a decision. Any member? No? In which case, Wendy, can I ask you? Oh, to, uh, uh, Councillor Watkins, Councillor Pandir and Councillor Phillips all have their hands up, Chair. Uh, they're not showing on my screen. Oh, I've got them. Got them. Okay. Uh, Councillor Watkins. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I've, I've looked at this with some detail now, and it's uh, it's, it's another it's another one of them <coughs> where we've got um, a nice looking plan. I think it's a nice nice looking plan on paper. Um, it. it seems to be set out well but when you start looking at the detail of it and um, it, it gets a little bit frightening i mean there's nine areas on there that will never be adopted by Warwick county council so i'm not i'm not really surprised that Warwick county council are not objecting to this um but we all know of the of of the problems we have with unadopted roads in within our areas so you've got nine areas there um a lot of that is um, fronting the social housing side of it. So I think we're going to have massive problems there with social housing on unadopted <coughs> roads within the future. Um, when, when you also look further down on the detail, there's a, there's, there's a lot of public footpaths missing. Um, so you will actually be walking on the road that's unadopted to go to the front of your house. Um, again, it's a single entry estate. I think we need to be um, saying more about these single entry, single, single exit estates. It's, um, it's not good. It's not good for now. It's not good for the future. Um, and I think we need to be sending that message out loud and clear to developers and to Warwickshire County Council that we don't actually like single entry estates. Um, Chair, I'm going to leave it there now. That, that, that is, that they're the main points that I uh, picked up on it. I think the social housing side of it as well could be better sp spread out. I know they're meeting the standards that we set out, but um, the, in one area, for instance, in the top 
left hand corner as I'm looking at it anyway. <coughs> there's, a, there's a big area there of social housing. I think it could have been a, a, um, spread out a little bit better. They're my main points that I'm bringing up, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Claire, do you want to respond to these individually or wait till I've had a number of speakers? I can wait, Chair, and possibly okay. bring in highways as well. Yeah, okay, thank you. Councillor Panda. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Hawkesbury Village, in practice, an island isolated from the rest of the borough, separate by a level crossing on one side and a canal on the other side. There are only two entry and exit points on the canal weak bridge, can't cope with heavy vehicles over 18 turn. On the other side, railway crossing with a significant downtime. Knuckle project means that there will be an increase in the number of trains using the track, which means barrier being down more frequently. There are already 750 dwellings and 80 houses on the Stockley Road were approved. Hawkesbury site will add another 204, which means 1,034 plus 70 houses already built on Coventry side near certain stock. Black Horse Road is already congested as cars are parked on pavement to allow flow of traffic, but problem to wheelchair and guide dog users as they can't pass through. Black Horse Road from railway crossing up to the Long Longford Road has only one side pavement, which is not wide enough so that push chairs from both directions pass through. So they have to uh, come on the road, you know, when one side push chair going one side and the other side. And the other one, lack of community facilities are there in any primary or secondary school, no doctor surgery, no dentist in the village. In the document submitted to the inspector shows Foxford School and Grangehurst School in the catchment area. And when we said they are not in the catchment area, but they are in the Coventry. But no school in the catchment area are Ash Green Secondary School, Cedar Primary School and St. Giles Primary School, which were not shown on the statement of common ground as they were far than acceptable walking distance, which is one kilometer. And Ash Green School is even more than preferred maximum distance, which is two kilometers. So maybe three kilometers from the Hawkesbury village. Now in highway safety and accessibility, why schools are not mentioned as they are not more important or because they are preferred more than preferred walking distance. So I just want to ask um, in that accessibility side that they mentioned doctor surgery, they mentioned dentist. Why schools are not mentioned in that document? Because uh, they were thinking that people might say that, why, uh, but they are not uh, within the walking distance. Uh, and if and uh, if there's like don't uh, if there's a fire or heart attack somebody have uh, and the ambulance and fire engine will pass through when a railway crossing down. So in this uh, the financial contribution are good for Nuneet and Bedworth Council and uh, Warsha County Council, but these will not have direct benefit to the resident of Hawkesbury and will not help Black House Road congestion and school and schools are very far away. So, uh, so I can't, can't support uh, this application because of road safety and uh, also amenities are missing in this area. And uh, maybe in the future, there more houses will be coming. So, thank you, Chair. You're muted, Chair. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just going to say I've got. I'm going to take the next two speakers, and then we'll do a catch up on some of the um, the comments and, and responses by yourself and county officers. Uh, Councillor Phillips. Councillor Phillips. I think he's taken his hand down, Chair, so I think it's on to Councillor Tromans now. <coughs> OK, well, if he changes his mind, he can come back. Councillor Tromans. Thank you, Chair. Um, I I'd like to make some specific points about this application and then some more general ones. 
um, uh, that, that cut across this and, and some of the other ones that um, we've seen recently and are likely to see later on tonight. I mean, first of all, with, with specific regard to this application. Sorry, sorry Councillor Chairman, can I just stop you there? We're, we're debating this item, not yeah. one. Not what not one's like on the agenda. It's no, so, uh, as I said, Chair, with specific regard to this application, um, I, I think uh, Councillors Brown and Pandare have hit the nail on the head. Again, we're repeating the mistakes of the past of uh, of building before there's the infrastructure there. Uh, I mean, you know, to say the roads are congested in the area, congestion doesn't really cover it, does it? Um, and again, you know, uh, I've got to say, I agree with everything Councillor Watkins had to say. You know, what happened to pepper potting? I know it, you know, kind of suits the uh, the social providers to have them in larger groups. But, you know, we're not here to, at their convenience. We're here for what's best for the residents of the borough. Uh, and in terms of infrastructure, if you can't even provide people with a footpath, then, you know, we're not even meeting the basic minimums. So, yes, it looks lovely and glossy and, and laid out beautifully. But then... Um, it, it, it's got shortcomings as soon as you get down into the detail. Um, I, I mean, what really concerns me, and this is something else that, that uh, Councillor Watkins very rightly hit on, was it's another single entry uh, development. And the speaker, uh, on behalf of the applicant, was saying, oh, yeah, there's going to be 300, there needs to be at least 380 um, uh, uh, units built here under the borough plan. Um, well, I know we're only considering 204 tonight, and that doesn't, you know, breach the limit of one access way, but 380 does. So if we know that's going to happen, what happened to the opportunity to charge some some sill um, to say, well, you know, there's got to be another route in and out of this development. It's going to be expensive, and that cost needed to be aggregated across all of the phases or all of the developers that we're going to build on there. Uh, for the 380, 400 houses in total that were going to be there. But we're losing that opportunity, it seems, because we're only considering this in isolation. And I'm a bit disappointed that um, the, the Allen planning and highways haven't um, got their heads together on that particular aspect of it. And then more generally, you know, the, uh, in terms of the share of, uh, of, of social housing, it, it's too high again. You know, what we need is people to get on the housing ladder. That's what they tell us they want. That's what most people aspire to. So the 74, 26% is the wrong way around. Um, and in terms of bungalows, it's it's great that there are some, but it's less than a quarter. And, you know, with an ageing population and with people with disability needs and whatever, it just doesn't seem adequate. There was a real opportunity to do something major there, to put 30 or 40 in, um, that could be used for adapted living or elderly people, and, and that's just another lost opportunity. And then we've got the layout of the site, which is entirely within the builder's gift. It looks very pretty, but there's no opportunity really for photovoltaic or any other solar use there, because the houses just aren't aligned right with the large part of the roof um, to catch the sun. And so there's a huge opportunity that doesn't really cost them or us anything, and it's just a shame that we haven't pressed the developer when these plans were being formulated to align things in a way that would be solar friendly. Um, I understand that there is you know, some talk about there being uh, provision for electric vehicle charging points, um, but you know, I'd like a little bit more certainty on, it, on, on exactly what that's going to look like um, on this development, because you know, I mean, people are hopefully in the future going to um, be mo using electric vehicles more, and we need to be prepared for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Claire, is there anything that you want to come back on? Chair, is that all of the speakers? It's all. Um, I've got one more speaker at the moment, but I mean, I don't know who else will come in. If you, if you want to do a catch up at the moment, please. Yeah, OK, that's fine. Right. In terms of the points um, in terms of which was raised a couple of times by the single entry into the estate, I just will point out that is in compliance with HSG 12 and the concept plan at SPD. That is what's required in both of those. Um, in terms of the affordables, again, um, we now have an ad adopted affordable housing SPD 
that does set out the appropriate sizes, um, cluster sizes, and the numbers of clusters within a development. And again, as I said in my presentation, that that um, complies. As I said, there is one cluster which is slightly above the, the maximum of 15 units, but because of how the dwellings are located in that cluster, it makes sense to have them in that um, in that cluster on the site. Um, housing are satisfied with um, the spread across the site. Um, again, in terms of affordables, Councillor Trayman mentioned um, the 74 to 26% split affordable rent shared ownership. That is something that is specified in the affordable housing SPD as a requirement. And again, which our housing team have asked for. Um, in terms of the bungalows, um, four is the number that have, was requested by the housing team and that has what's been provided on on the site um have i missed anything else i don't think so uh, I, I don't I, there was that many i don't think so but that, there were some that may be the county yeah there are issues that the county may be able to to help with uh, yeah it, it i guess if i can ask the county highways people um th there was comments made about that one entrance in uh, things not be that being no footpaths. I know on the other part of the estate down there, there's a similar thing. But I thought as part of the front of the houses that was still public highway. Um, and also, c could you just clarify about adoption? Are are all the roads and footpaths going to be adopted? Thank you. Uh, uh, you may have you may well have listed some things that I haven't just asked you. Uh, yeah, I've got a I've got a couple of chair. Um, in terms of um, the unadopted roads on site, there will be parts of that layout that won't be adopted. So the private driveways, we wouldn't adopt those. Right. Um, and, and that may be where they're referring to there not being any footways. So we we will expect for the adopted part of the highways for there to be a footway uh, adjacent to the carriageway and uh, for those to be street lit but there, there could well be part and they're probably shown on the layout as private as private driveways uh, that we would not accept that we we'll need to adopt those okay. okay um the other thing i've noted down uh been mentioned uh by councillor brown in his um response and uh, picked up by Councillor Tromans is that it's this building of infrastructure uh, not being there before the houses are occupied and they're absolutely right that will be the situation uh, because the delivery of these highway improvement schemes is going to be significant it's going to take quite a lot of money to do it and it will take some time so the chances are if this were to be approved there could be people occupying houses before all of that infrastructure is delivered um, picking up on the point um, that was made about um, school children and walking to school and uh, particularly at the Baton Road School Lane Junction, as part of the highway improvement scheme there, facilities for pedestrians to cross that are, would be included. But again, that won't be there until the highway improvement schemes are delivered. And at this moment in time, we've got no date of when that would be um because we're going to be dependent on contributions from several local plan sites to fund those works okay okay thank you um i'm sure we might get a, a couple more things um councillor lloyd thank you chair just a couple of things on on highways um you know the area i mean i agree with some of the speakers that have said about the uh, highway impl implications within uh, within that area you know you've you've got black horse road um which is uh, got the railway crossing in it which is constantly breaking down on a regular basis um if that breaks down then to get the children to school they have to go down and over the bridge then back out uh, through Hallbrooks and all the way back up um, through uh, the Coventry Road and uh, uh, into Bedworth. Um, or they have to go down through Bulkington. 
Um, but either way, they've got to go over that over that one other exit, which is the um, uh, humpback bridge over the canal. I've always said, and I've always thought that the highway um, uh, survey that was done within that area um, was wrong. Um, and, you know, I probably agree that the um, uh, local survey that's been done by local people who know the area um, is, uh, you know, a more realistic survey of that of that area. The question I want to ask the County Council um, is, um, I know um, they've accepted the developers uh, highway um, uh, strategy uh, for improving all the highways, et cetera, in that area. Um, have they looked at um, the residents one and what weight do they put on uh, the residents survey over and above the um, uh, official highways um, uh, survey that was done by the developers? So that's a question really to the highway authority before I continue. Okay, thank you. Joanne or Clarence? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, I honestly don't know whether that information was sent from the, the resident survey through to our transport planning colleagues. It's not been mentioned specifically to me, so I've not checked anything before coming here tonight. Okay. I don't know whether the resident, whether the, um, the lady that spoke can, can tell us whether it was sent in and who it was sent to, if that was the case. Okay, and the second question, well, hopefully um, the local county councillor, uh, Councillor Pandar, can uh, shine some light on that uh, in a little bit. But um, the second question um, was um, the, the survey they put in, is the county still 100% sure uh, in their light that that strategy that was put in um, for the highways of that area is still good? even with the train crossings the information yeah the information we've been given from colleagues in transport planning who have pulled over the, the modules, particularly at the local plan stage uh, and followed it up with the application is that the, the highway network provided we get the improvements on the long ford road corridor uh, and at m6 junction three yeah. um, will be enough to cope with the extra traffic i Chair, I, I mean, I've, I've heard what the, so I've, I blanked out halfway through that, but uh, I heard most of what was said. Um, I've got to be honest, I'm not concerned, overly concerned with the um, uh, uh, the junction, the motorway. My big concerns are the Coventry Road junction with Black Horse Road and the bridge. They're my concerns. And obviously, as the development um, gets gets going and um, they start developing uh, uh, that area even more, um, instead of uh, most of the traffic um, going around that like, little outer ring road they've got that goes around and takes you down to uh, the bridge, the new road, as I call it, um, it won't. It will be going down uh, Black Horse Road and then turning left onto the estate. Um, I do have real concerns, but I recognise that Warwickshire County Council and Coventry City Council are the highway authorities for that area. Warwickshire County Council, obviously, for Nuneaton and Bedworth. And Warwickshire County Council um, have said that, um, and we've just heard it, that um, uh, the, the survey that's been done is OK. And, you know, uh, to me, it gives me a problem because locally I know it ain't going to cope. It won't cope. It'll just get worse unless they've got that extra access point into there or they do uh, more improvements to the Coventry Road and uh, the Umpback Bridge area. Um, I'm, I'm really having difficulties with this. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, if I vote to refuse it, I've just got that idea that the planning inspectorate are going to come back and uh, um, say, well, Warwickshire County Council said there's nothing wrong with the highways. It'll be OK. Um, and we'll end up with all the costs. 
I've got real concerns about it. We've been put in a real position there between um, the Government Inspector and Warwickshire County Council. Um, I will hold back and I would hope that the County Councillor for that area, Councillor Pandar, can come back and tell us what representations he's made to the County Council and at least try. I want to vote against this. I've got to be quite honest um, because I think it's wrong. But at the moment, I can't because I've got Warwickshire County Council saying there's nothing wrong with a highway. That's my problem. I want some evidence, um, hard evidence. I want to know whether that traffic study that the local residents have done has been passed on to Warwickshire County Council and what the response was. Um, so I've got difficulties with this, Chair. OK, thank you. Uh, let me just point out what I'm intending to do because uh, you know, we're a fair way into the the meeting already. I have four four speakers listed that hasn't already spoken, and I've also got somebody that wants to speak again. Depending on the time, is whether or not I'll allow that person to come back in or not. Councillor Phillips and Councillor Phillips. <coughs> Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. I haven't got much to add at all to what Councillor Lloyd has said. It's a decent development, notwithstanding um, the um, ideas or concerns that Councillor Watkins brought up. It's a decent development, but it's in the wrong place. It's in the wrong place. I mean, I would like to vote against it. I've still got to make my mind up regarding traffic, but the planning system and our officers who work within the planning system have had to make a recommendation. And I'm still dwelling over that, Chair. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sargent. Thanks, Chair. Um, just going back to the sort of adopted roads, that I think um, what Councillor Watkins is talking about isn't um, um private drives he's talking about um and I've, I've tried to get the numbers off the plan but it's very very small and, it, and and i think we're looking at sort of 61 to 80 there's like um a, a pinky color like pinky colored bit at the front which is like a shared access road for for the properties there and there's also i think 183 there's several several places there um highlighted in um light pink and i've had this problem in Maple Park because they did that uh, the similar thing around there where the, the road leads up to sort of a, a shared access where six seven eight um, homes have got the same uh, uh, access road but they, they they're all responsible for it and the problem is is that obviously when they buy them they, they don't they don't see or they don't get told or and it ends up um, there's problems because what they come on to to us as councillors or they go on to, to the Warwickshire County Council and they and the, and then the problem is is obviously the county will say no no it's nothing to do with us it's down to U6 or 8 or whatever it is and of course then people are up in arms because um they don't want to repair it and they don't want to put their hands in their own pockets I mean one problem I've had recently was a tree that was on the pro their property on the this joint access property have fallen down over over the footpath and they wouldn't pay for it for it to have to have it removed so so the county did come and remove that one fortunately um but it it that i think is the problem and myself and councillor watkins have worked hard um with um uh, with the county and the and the borough to get roads and footpaths uh, adopted by the county recently and that and that is happening but that's taken a lot of officer time and a lot of work to get that done and I think, you know, for me, if this is an option to ref to refuse it based on these unadopted roads, um, then I'm going to ref uh, refuse it. I don't know whether one of the officers can sort of confirm that, that that's a reasonable reason to um, turn it down. OK, thank, thank you. you. Well, we will ask them. I'm going to ask the county to come back in. Um, you particularly mentioned 61 to 80 and there were others so um is that right those parts wouldn't be adopted and uh, uh, and are the problems as uh councillor sergeant said 
and probably back to Claire um, on whether that would be, um, I mean, we're not there yet. We haven't even got to a vote on this bit yet. But um, is, that, is that a reason that could be put forward possibly for refusal? Uh, so, uh, Karen or Joanne? In, in, probably not. Our standards allow for six, we usually allow up to six houses on a private drive. And there's no requirement for those private drives to have a separate footway. Um, and, the, and the layout was uh, subject to a road safety audit that didn't flag any of those that sort of issue as a highway safety problem. OK, and um, maybe you can answer this, but is it fair to say that those parts of the highway that aren't going to be adopted should be pointed out by the developer or highlighted by the any any purchasers solicitors. Yes, absolutely, they should. Um, and I'm just I'm just trying to look at the, uh, the the layout plan to see try and find the plot numbers that Councillor Sargent was referring to, um, because there are there are some quite long lengths within there that would need pointing out. Do you mind if I just say something, uh, Chair? Yeah, yeah. yeah. if that's going to help the officer, yeah. Yeah, On, I think it's 61 to 80. There's like yeah. a, a, you're saying six. Now, my count there, there's more than six. There's, uh, looks like nine. Let's have a look. So it's right in the middle. So you come off the access road um, uh, into, into the estate and you come up and it's this, Third turning yeah. on the right goes pink, like a light pink colour. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I know where you are on the. I'm looking at a different plan. I'm looking at the um, adopted highway plan right. uh, that was submitted in support of the application. Um, and from the looks of it, it appears that there's um, private drives approach to this that wouldn't be adopted. Yeah, it's showing on the plan that they wouldn't be adopted. I don't know whether I can actually share my screen or not. I'm happy to try. I can't help you with that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. I'll try with this one and see if it works. Right, I well, we can see it. Has that appeared? OK, so basically between this plan and another plan, I will try and flick through. These show the the um, the coloured up areas are the bits that are being would be offered for adoption. This is um, a second element. This is the first. If I zoom out a little bit so it's on the same sort of scale. Mm -hmm. So if I flick between the two, I'm hoping it does change. Is that yeah. changing? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see these are the sections that wouldn't be adopted. They're not being offered for adoption. It's the developer's land. We can't compel them to offer it either. OK. So can I just so you're saying, you know, so there'd be a road there that yeah. these people would partly own? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It would be the re the chances are it would be the responsibility of either um, the um, a management company to look after, or that responsibility would be handed over to the residents as part of their um, freehold lease or uh, which whatever arrangement they have to to make um, sell the properties. But part of the well, the answer you did say more than. It, oh, it, it is it is showing more than six yes yeah. so that to me so, is a reason for refusal then well you you could cite that if i'd suggest you discuss with claire um i'm not aware that the safe the road safety audit brought it up as an issue um okay. i'm going to introduce if i don't mind i'll introduce karen watkins she's got um, as a far more experience in terms of dealing with full applications or reserve matter layouts OK, um, my understanding is that um, a developer can actually keep an entire development as private if they 
um, if they intend to do that. Um, they will offer up those areas that, that they see fit to be adopted uh, as far as their development's concerned. But it, my understanding is that it, it is entirely up to them if they want to keep certain areas um, private. I, I'll apologise, I'm not overly um, familiar with this particular um, layout. Looking at, looking at the areas on here, I can't actually tell, other than the, the drawing um, Joanne has just um, shared with you, whether these were meant to be uh, shared areas or whether they're meant to be private areas. Just looking at this without the benefit of a, a Section 38 plan, they look like they're meant to be shared surface areas, um, which don't have the benefit of, of footway provision. Um, I don't know if that's helped at all. Uh, no, I'm not sure it has. But, OK, uh, I do apologise. But, but thanks for that anyway. I think it's going to be down to the advice we get from our officers of, um, from what was said earlier. But it might be that, uh, Claire, you need to sort of just clarify that a little bit later on. Um, Councillor Tandy. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I am aware that I seconded your um, proposal to uh, allow debate <clears throat> to go ahead. But having heard the debate and the discussions about this uh, application, I do feel similar views to those expressed by Councillor Lloyd and it seems um, other members as well. My concerns are around the access to the site. Um, and as Councillor Sargent has so eloquently explained about um, unadopted roads, I too have had major experience with this um, on Maple Park over, over several years. I absolutely understand the um, possible problems that we would have with the planning inspectorate on this one chair but i am currently of the view that we may just have to bite the bullet bullet with this planning application but still have time to consider my views before a vote is taken thank you chair okay thank you um is there anybody wishing to speak that hasn't already spoken Smith. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, actually, I've heard an awful lot in the debate tonight, and I'm really concerned about this uh, this site, and particularly around the traffic issues. All those with local knowledge know that those roads around there are already jam-packed. And, and the access to this area down Black Horse Lane uh, or across the bridge is just a nightmare. Um, it would seem to me that the highways haven't taken into account the residence survey. They seem to have just um, taken into account uh, the, the survey that was done by the developers. I'm wondering if this is an area where we could um, look at a deferment for highways to look again at the uh, the traffic modelling around there and take into account the resident survey and then come back to us. I think at the moment I would like to refuse it. My problem is I don't think as it stands uh, we could defend that refusal on highways grounds at, at appeal because county aren't, uh, aren't objecting. I'd like to give it a second chance if possible. I don't know if anyone's up for that, but uh, if they can look at the uh, the resident survey, I think it might help clarify some of the uh, so, some of the traffic problems around there. Thank you, Chair. Happy to second you to that. Sorry, who said that? Council Trainers. Bear with me, please. Okay, we we've had it um, we've had it moved and seconded a deferment. Um, I just want to confirm with yourself and the seconder, Councillor Smith. 
that it would be to look at the the traffic the traffic modelling for the proposed development, uh, the the um, the pieces about the adoption um, within that, and and the what uh, what has been taken on board from the resident survey. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. Are all members clear on that? Does anybody? So it's getting a bit confusing now. Does anybody wish to to speak on that? No. Right. Um, I did have Councillor Lloyd and Councillor Pandare wanting to speak, but that was on the other. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of test the water with the committee and ask that we. Wendy, are you are you happy with the wording of that reasons for deferment? And Claire? Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. OK, thank you. So, Wendy, I'm going to ask you to take a vote on the uh, proposal to defer the matter to look at the, 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 the things about the adoption of parts of the roads, the traffic modelling, the highways and the what was submitted by the residents to do with highways. Please. Thank you, Chair. Please indicate for, against or abstain when your name is called. Councillor Gran. For deferral. Councillor Hancock. For. Councillor Lloyd. For. Councillor Pandare. For. Councillor Phillips. For. Councillor Redkin. For. Councillor Sargent. For. Councillor Shepherd. For. Councillor Smith. For. Councillor Tandy. For. Councillor Tromans. For. Councillor Watkins. For. Councillor Wilson. For. That's unanimous, Chair. Okay, thank you. I, I guess I'd better do it right. Uh, that becomes the substantive motion then. Could, can I start by asking everybody to put your hands down? That have got them all. Councillor Pandare, Tandy, and Ash, did you? Yeah, Chair. I just wanted to come in um, on the deferment. Um, <clears throat> can I just double check with members that that is all they're wishing us to um, get back and review? Because there was quite a bit of discussion around education okay. and uh, with respect. In fairness to the applicant, what, what I want to avoid is if we come back to the next committee and then other matters are, are sort of put to the applicant. Um, so I just wanted to double check that, Chair. Well, I, I think we, we I did ask for members if they were uh, agreeing with what had been said about the thing, and that's, that's what they came back with. I, I don't see any problem in them questions being asked if you want to ask them. Um, but the it brings us back then that becomes a substantive motion can i ask if i'm not going to go through the list again only to ask if you can put your hands up if you if you've got any objection to that becoming the uh, the motion councillor watkins can you put your hand down unless you're objecting chair, chair it, it was um i just councillor wanted watkins, can you put your hand down please yeah I've, I've had my hand up for a while chair yeah i know but i asked and it didn't go up at the point uh, it was moved and seconded. It was voted on. It becomes a substantive motion now. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, Councillor Watkins, on the, uh, chair, on the substantive motion. Yeah, Chair. All I wanted to ask was is, is if we could also add in that um, questions about the single entry to this new estate. If we could add that, and then I'd be more than happy on that because it is over 200 houses. Well, um, I, I don't know, it's up to you. Well, well, it was up to members. My, I was assuming when we're talking about highways and stuff that that would be part of it. I'm I sure did too, Chair. Thank I'm you. Councillor Tromans, I'm speaking. Um, they, I'm sure the county officers, as well as our officers, have picked up your comment about that single point entry. Um, okay, right. 
can I ju- can I just say to members, I'm not going to keep going around the reeking. We've been nearly two two hours on this one, Councillor Panda. If it's quick, I'll allow you back in. Yeah, it's quick. Uh, if we can add, because uh, I mentioned schools are very very far away. Well, it's Councillor, not just in well, Councillor Panda, I will stop you. Is I did ask. I, I went through the reasons that people gave uh, uh, for the deferment. And I asked them if that was it, uh, and it didn't come up then. Um, we, we can a- we can ask officers uh, to uh, to also ask that question. Is, is that fair enough, Claire? Yes, Chair. But just just point out, as I, as I said in my presentation, we've got no objection from from education, and they have requested quite a substantial. 106 contribution to cover the, the education provision requirements. Well, it, equally, we didn't have any objections about the highways, but members have decided to um, defer it for highway reasons. Um, OK. Right, so it's been agreed that we defer this item for further discussions on the, on the highway implications and it be reported back to this committee. And also the, the officers have noted um, the things about uh, education so they might want to speak to them again as well to see if they've still got the same view okay thank you very much thank you all for the participation in that first item if we can move on to item number two school lane please okay chair just bear with me it's okay Now, this application is for the erection of 129 dwellings and is a re- approval of reserve matters relating to appearance, landscaping, layout and scale of an approved outline application, which was granted outline consent by members in 2019. It is being reported to the, commit- to the committee at the request of Councillor Brown. Three objections from neighbouring properties have been received, as detailed on the agenda raising issues such as increased congestion, highway safety issues, impact on trees and wildlife and air quality implications. In terms of the principle of development, this has already been established through the granting of the outline permission and the site is part of the strategic housing allocation HSG6. The application was received prior to the adoption of the concept plan for the site and the new supplementary planning document, the Sustainable Design and Construction SPD. In order to meet the new policies, the number of dwellings provided on the site have been reduced several times over the application process in order to meet the new SPD requirements. And the final yield for the site is 129, whereas the outline was for up to 150. In relation to visual amenity, the design of the units is to be in keeping with the concept plan with a mix of both two and two and a half storey dwellings. The house type Dovenby B is designed to provide interest to corner plots as these semis are angled to follow the street corners. The ski dam includes chimneys to some of the properties, brick header and window sills, some with contrasting bricks, contemporary can- canopies and traditional canopies to front doors, cable projections, flat roof dormers, and a mix of two and two and a half storey dwellings of varying designs of semis, detached and terraced and apartments. Materials consist of brick and render, which is acceptable. The scheme originally provided large numbers of front parking to properties, which is contrary to the sustainable design and construction SPD. This bit has been reduced as much as possible, and whilst there is still a large percentage of front parking, this has been broken up to some extent with landscaping as required by the SPD, and policy have removed their objection to this. In terms of housing mix, the proposal will provide 129 dwellings of A mix that meets the council's latest strategic housing market assessment, which states there is a greatest need for two and three bedroom properties. The site will provide 22 bedroom market houses, 66 three bedroom market dwellings and 11 four bedroom market properties. 
A total of 25% affordable dwelling is provided, which equates to 32 dwellings of a 10-year mix of 53 rented and 47 shared ownership, as in line with the approved 106 legal agreement 10-year mix required for the site. The affordable units are identified by the green and yellow dots on the plan, green for rented and yellow for shared ownership. The mix of the affordable units are two one-bed dwellings, 14 two-bed, 14 three-bed and two four-bed. And the mix has been agreed with the council's housing team. Since the application was submitted, the council's new affordable housing SPD has been introduced, which introduces a maximum cluster sizes for affordable homes. This has meant that the layout has changed in order to comply with this. The SPD states that for this size of development, there should be a maximum of seven affordable dwellings in each cluster, and there should be four to five groups of affordable units. There is one cluster of seven dwellings and the rest are below this with one group of six, four groups of four and one group of three. The affordable dwellings are split into seven groups and it's considered that these are spread around the site. In terms of residential amenity, 98% of the dwellings meet the required internal space standards. The policy team consider that this is acceptable and also in terms of passive stove design and outside drying areas for the apartments. A total of 38% of the dwellings comply with the additional building reg standards, which means they are classed as lifetime homes suitable for adaption from young families to older individuals and for adaption for temporary or permanent physical impairment, enabling people to stay in their homes longer, giving choice for people with disabilities, which meets the standards in the SPD. Numbers 41 and 43 School Lane, which are opposite, are the closest properties to the site, but these are across school lane to the site and distance standards are complied with. Within the site, distance standards are generally met. There are some shortfalls in the required 20 metre separation in some instances, such as 18 and a half metres from plots 25 to 2 and 3, 19 and a half from plots 26 to 6 and 7, but these shortfalls are considered acceptable under the SPD, which specifically states that the distance can be reduced if a crossroads or public areas and if these distances are therefore not considered to be detrimental for residential amenity. Plots 5 to 18 have their rear elevations and gardens facing onto the new commercial units of the Red Kangaroo building. For most of the properties, the distance is between 14.5 to 22 metres to the side of this building. This building is 8.7 metres to the eaves, which is the area closest to these properties which is slightly taller than most two-storey dwellings, but not as tall as a, as a two-and-a-half-storey house. There are no distance standards in the SPD specifically for this type of arrangement, but from habitable ground floor windows to a blank two-storey building, the distance will generally be expected to be 14 metres. Only plot 17 has a shortfall at approximately 13.2. This is a market house, and as the commercial building is already under construction, so it will be an to an extent, buy beware and refusal on this basis will be difficult to support at appeal as there is no specific policy to relate to. Furthermore, there are no first floor windows on this elevation of the commercial building, so there will be no increase overlooking. One of the house types known and named uh, the Seaton is two and a half storeys and the council would generally look for distances of, of approximately 20 metres between these properties and others. On the proposed layout, the distance between plots 56 and 57 to 50 and 51 is 20 and a half metres. Similarly, the plot, the, between plots 72 and 73 to 101 and 102 is just over 20 metres. However, the rear of these two, two and a half storey dwellings are only approximately 1.3 metres taller than, the, than a two storey. So the height difference would have minimal impact. And this two and a half storey house only has one window to the rear at roof level, which is a roof light. So they were not considered to be views from these windows to provide any sense of overlooking. The separation distance is therefore considered acceptable. There are occasions on the layout where dwellings project more than three metres past the rear of the adjoining property, contrary to guidance in the SPD. However, there are mitigating circumstances, which means this is acceptable. For example, plot 27 projects five metres plus um, plot 26. However, the room affected has two windows and the projection is northwest to it, so there is no direct loss of sunlight. 
In addition, the length of the affected garden runs along the road, so it's open to the full length, providing a sense of permanent openness. Officers consider that PD rights for rear extensions to the affected plots should be removed as detailed in condition 13. The proposed access, which was approved at the outline stage, is to be off school lane and is proposed to have drop curbs. As per the outline, a token crossing on school lane is to be provided to give access to Heckley Park and the wider area. With the exception of the four apartments, um, excuse me, all the properties have two parking spaces. The four apartments would have one um, parking space each. There are also some limited visitor spaces within the sites. The, the parking spaces are mostly to the front of, or tandem parking to the side and some properties have their parking to rear gardens. County Highways requests that the larger properties have more than two spaces each. However, at this current time, as the council has now adopted parking SPD, it is considered that this could not be assisted upon. County Highways have no objection to the scheme. They have requested a knee-high fence where the pond is in close proximity to the road and, and parking and which can be addressed by conditions. In relation to flooding, the site is in flood zone one, which is the least liable to flooding. The scheme is to use suds to the south of the site and which have been designed to also encourage the movement of wildlife around the site. The Environment Agency have no objection, similarly to the Warwickshire Flood Risk Team, who have no objection subject to further conditions in addition to those added to the outline approval. Highways England originally had concerns that the drainage to the adja adjacent elevated M6 south of the site was in close proximity to the proposed suds. However, with the introduction of one metre bun to the site edge to ensure that the suds would not impact on their drainage, they removed their objection. In relation to open space and ecology, policy HSG6 of the Borough Plan states that a locally equipped play area for, a younger, for younger children should be provided in the centre of the site. During the outline process, the council's parks team had concerns how this was going to be provided within the site and did not actually want the play area in the centre due to the overhead power lines. They recognised that the dwellings were to be in 400 metres of the leak within the southern area of Heckley Park, which is on the other side of School Lane, and which was to be connected by the site's provision of a pedestrian crossing over School Lane, and have therefore requested a preference for off-site contribu contributions instead of the provision of a leak within the site. This has been agreed with the developer and is to be provided via a supplementary document to the outline 106 legal agreement and will provide for younger children's play facilities, green gym and path provision to the southern section of Heckley Park. This is in addition to the 1,357 per dwelling already agreed via the 106 on the outline for the capital and maintenance cost for improvements to teenage and teenage and older children's play facilities at Heckley Park and the Miners Welfare Park and towards allotments in the area. This approach for this particular site is also more in keeping with the Council's emerging open space SPD. In terms of connectivity of open space and to the wider cycle route, the proposal provides a three metre cycle pedestrian path to the west of the site, which then goes across the front of the site to link onto the wider cycle network. The outline includes a requirement of approximately £666 per new property towards improving cycle provision in the locality and wider area. There is also a footpath to the east side of the development to provide links within the site and to ultimately connect, connect with the adjacent development, also part of HSG, HSG6, when this adjacent land has come forward. The connection of this link has been included within the existing 106 legal agreement and via a new condition. In reference to biodiversity, the applicant has rerun the biodiversity calculations which were approved at the outline stage to take into account the layout and this has indicated that the site can still provide a net get biodiversity gain within the site. The existing hedgerows are to be retained and enhanced on the site except for a small area required for removal for the access and an existing pond is to be retained required by the council's parks team. Existing grassland is also proposed to be enhanced Initial concerns by the Parks Team and Council's tree officer were to the proximity of the houses to the western hedgerow, which also served as a wildlife corridor, shown in this section here. The final design has moved the houses and the footpath away from this as much as possible. The concept plan SPD recommends a landscape buffer to the M6 with open space in this area to protect some of the ridge and furrow and recommends wildlife meadow mix and increased ponds for wildlife which have been utilised within the design. 
The scheme is largely in compliance with the loss of trees shown under the outline scheme, with the exception of a group of, a group of ash trees to the east of the site. The arboriculture report provided with the application has seen these as having a good physiological and structural condition, but still consider they are only category class C trees. Any loss of trees is regrettable, but the trees are not considered to be worthy of a TPO, and loss of trees has been considered against the planning balance as a whole for the merits of the scheme. In terms of air quality, the site is, in clo is close to the Coventry city boundary, which has a citywide air quality management area. However, air quality was addressed at the outline stage and an air quality assessment was submitted with the outline application. The outline included conditions for the submission of a dust mitigation scheme during the construction period, the provision of electric charging points to parking areas and the requirements for low emission boilers. In terms of noise, conditions were placed on the outline, which included a noise assessment, which was to include the proposed improvements to the M6 for smart motorway running and to include an assess assessment of noise to the approved commercial units that, that were to be built to the northeast of the site. The noise assessment has been carried out, showing that the site can be accommodated to include a three metre high acoustic fence to the commercial units to the east and with careful design of the elevations of the houses facing the M6 that the noise bond is no longer necessary. The council's environmental health team have no objection to the scheme. The recommendation is therefore one of approval, subject to conditions and the completion of a supplementary document to the 106 legal agreement to now include off-site contributions to the younger children's play facilities at Heckley Park. Thank you, Chair. Apologies, I've been talking to myself for five minutes. <laughs> uh, thanks, Claire. But no, what I was <laughs> what I was just saying to myself was, uh, just in case any members haven't seen the addendum, there is a, a slight difference to the recommendation that's printed in the agenda, and I'll read that out so everybody knows. Um, and that's that the, that the planning committee is recommended to grant planning permission, subject to the conditions as printed, and to the completion of a supplemental document. To the section 106 legal agreement to include off-site contributions to the younger children's play facilities at Heckley Park and I would move that to enable debate to take place. Is that seconded? Seconded chair. Thank you. Any member wish to speak? Um. Chair, I think Councillor Brown was going to speak on this is um... Oh I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Apologies. Yeah, I've got bits of paper everywhere. Yeah. Um, uh, Councillor Brown. Th th thank you, Chair. Uh, I asked this. Thank you, Chair. I ask this application to be called to the committee uh, at the request of the Exor Residents Association. Um, uh, Chair, I'm sorry. There's interference on the line here. Cameras off, please, and the microphones. It might help. Thank you. Can we restart? Chair, I, do, the I do apologise, Councillor Brown. Um, I've just noticed that Councillor Pandar on my system's got is open twice on it, so that might be causing feedback when he comes on. Yeah, I, I saw that as well, but. It was the same on the previous one. Right. Councillor, Councillor Panda, can you, right. Councillor Brown. Th th thank you, Chair. Uh, I asked for this application to be referred to the committee at the request of the Exor Residents Association, who had grave concerns about the nature of the development on this site. Um, uh, if we refer to the parking provision at the development, Warwickshire County Council, in its assessment of the development, have highlighted uh, to, the, to their mind there's a shortage of parking provision for cars within the development. In the, unusually for the plans of these nature, the parking uh, garages have been counted as parking spaces, I believe, um, unless they've amended the plans since. Um, and 
as we all know, garages are limited in their size, whereas cars grow bigger with each passing model, but garages stay the same. Um, but Warwick County Council's highways have noted that parking comes under the borough, not the county council, so they couldn't object on that on that ground, and it would come down to this committee to look at that aspect. Um, I've also measured the, the width of the roads at this development, and they scale up to about 15 feet, which means that if you have a, two cars parked legally in the road at any one point on this uh, development, it's not possible for another car to pass between them which means either cars park illegally on the pavement um, or the, the, the road is in, in, inaccessible should people park legally on the road um, if they park opposite each other. Um, and it, there's an extract from the, the letter from Warwick County Council uh, to our council from the 19th of December last year, where they identified that pedestrian drop crossing points at junctions and at 100 metre intervals within the development have not been provided for the review, and therefore they couldn't consider them, meaning that if we approve this tonight and they can't um, fit the relevant pedestrian crossings into the development, then this whole thing has to come back to planning, uh, possibly to be looked at again. Um, so. I mean, th 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 there's, th there's, there's some good reasons that uh, th this um, application needs to be looked at more carefully. Uh, we've then got the issue of traffic on school lane, which as we know is already close to saturation. Uh, we've already covered the school lane junction with Coventry lane, uh, Road in the previous uh, application, so I won't revisit that. Um, uh, I should also point out that school lane itself is on the safer routes to school for children accessing the schools at Goodyear's End and at uh, Ash Green. And there's no foot, formal footpath on the road uh, where this side of this development is to be constructed. And I appreciate they're going to build a crossing, but we, we're still faced with a situation where children could be cycling down school lane at peak traffic times on a saturated road um, uh, and that's not entirely safe. Um, we've then got a development that's built very close to the M6. And um, we, we've, we've heard in the previous application how improvements to the junction are coming uh, in 2026. But finally, I'd just like to say that um, I've been advised Thanks, tonight. Do any members have any points of clarification? No, okay. Um, could I, Clegg, uh, could you confirm whether or not the county have objected to this application? No, they haven't objected, Chair. Uh, subject to um, conditions, they haven't, no. OK, in which case I'll ask jo Joanne and Karen, are you still with us? Yes, Chair, we are. I'm still OK, yeah. One of the points that Councillor Brown raised was about the, the road width on the proposed development. Um, do they do they comply with the uh, with the county's uh, specifications? They do, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, right, it. Councillor Phillips, is it a point of clarification to Councillor Brown? Actually, no, it's for Watch your County Council Chair, sorry. OK, in, in which case, it has been moved and seconded the recommendation to grant planning permission. Um, uh, Councillor Phillips. Thank you, Chair. It's just regarding on the report, I do need clarification from Watch your County Council that highways have no objection to the scheme and consider that most outstanding points, including pedestrian crossing points, can be addressed at the Section 38 technical stage. I'd just like to know what is the technical Section 38 stage, Chair? OK, thank you. Can you help us with that, Karen or Joanne? Yes, uh, yes, Chair. Um, the Section 38 stage will be the um, is a, a formal um, uh, adoption agreement with the developer. And it's at that stage that other elements of the um, engineering layout is considered. Uh, generally, um, dropped pedestrian crossings are something that are 
are left to Section 38. They're not usually a planning matter. Why they tend to get raised is where we have developments with significant uh, frontage access such as this. It can make it difficult to uh, provide, uh, make provision for that, uh, which is why uh, it is it is sometimes raised when looking at a layout. This obviously gives the developer an opportunity to um, uh, to show this provision. Uh, if they don't, then um, it is highlighted there could be a risk that they they could end up back in planning if that that can't be addressed. Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a small thing um, that we don't pick up on very often, um, but with, with a climate emergency announced and us trying to be a bit greener, it would be nice if these new developments come forward with all the relevant infrastructure for electric vehicle charging. Now, I note on the previous application there was a condition in there um, I'm wondering if we can add a condition into this development that uh, electric vehicle charging points and infrastructure is included. Yeah, it, it, it's a very good point and one I've, I ask a number of times. I think on other developments when I've asked, um, I'm told that the, the actual new properties have that provision within them um, so that they can put a charging point onto the outside of their property. Uh, I, and when I didn't understand why that isn't already there, apparently um, there's different, at the moment there's different specifications for different clocks. Um, but uh, it, it's a good it's a good question. Claire, can you ask if that would be a reasonable position to add it? Was it was in the previous one? Just to clarify, Chair and, and Councillor Smith, any conditions that are on the outline permission? also cover this it covers the whole site what a reserve matters looks at is the detail any conditions that are required in relation to that detail are put on the reserve matter so you've got two sets of conditions really you've got your outline conditions and these suggested on the agenda tonight all the conditions apply and all would should be met okay so so was it in the outline one? yes ah okay, okay. All right, that's good thank you chair Okay. Um, Pander. Uh, thank you, Chair. The school lane is a traffic problem because school lane is a, not a road, even a very small road. Huh? There is already too much traffic and it's very difficult to cross the lane. And if we have 129 houses, then there will be over 200 cars in the area, more cars in the area. And uh, vehicles regularly come to a standstill on school lane and Coventry Road and meaning that exhaust fumes would be highly concentrated around the area. Fumes from motorway will deteriorate the air quality around new development and will cause health problems in the near future. Infrastructure and amenity are not enough to cope the extra development. If we have 129 houses, where they are going to send their children which school and where they will register for the health care facilities as school and doctors are already full. Parking space is not enough for residents, there is uh, no provision for visitors and only two spaces for four bedroom houses. So the and the fence was mentioned uh, by the noise and uh, air quality control. Fence might uh, reduce the air quality, uh, might reduce the noise, but how is it going to stop the air quality in the area? So I'm just concerned with the air quality and noise in that area. And uh, there is no financial uh, contribution for the schools mentioned in the in the document. That's all. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Just so we're we're clear, do, do the county highways people want to respond to that? Chair, um, all of those items should have been covered as part of the outline application. Okay. So, so the off-site, um, the outline application would have dealt with all the off-site traffic impact, any air quality and noise assessments, um, and th this is just the reserve matter. So it's just literally everything within the site. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, and Claire, you, I assume you would would agree with that. 
Yes, I would, Chair. And also in relation to the points Councillor Pandare made regarding education provision, GPs, those sorts of issues, were all considered as part of the outline application and um, contributions were requested on that basis as part of the outline. OK, thank you. Councillor Tromans. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks to you and Councillor Smith for raising the, the, the point about the, the EVs and the wiring and all the rest of it for that. I'm glad it's in that condition uh, in, the, in the outline. Um, the other points I wanted to raise are um, the mix is better on this one in terms of the shared uh, ownership uh, and the, the purely social rental. But um, it seems that now we've lost, unfortunately, uh, any single story uh, properties at all and, and that would seem to be a bit of a lost opportunity with all the you know the, the what would seem to be uh, you know aging residents in the area um, the opportunity for people to move into single story um, and still stay local to where their social their, their networks are um, the other thing I'd like to raise is uh, as I did on the previous point um, what does the council do to encourage these developers to have the layout because these are you know open fields they can put the houses any way around they like what do the council do to encourage them to put them uh, in, in a solar friendly layout um, so that people can use photovoltaics or, or, or other solar okay thank you well clearly they, there's normally pre-application discussions between develop applicants and the uh, and the council uh, when I would think that's when they discuss it Claire Yeah, that's quite right, Chair. In some cases, particularly on larger sites, there is normally some pre-app discussions. And also during the course of applications as well, schemes can change quite considerably um, from the time they're first submitted. But things like a passive solar design are, are requirements of the policy BE3 of the Borough Plan and the concept and the Sustainable Design Construction SPD now. OK, thank you. Councillor Watkins, and can I just ask Councillor Smith, you put your hand up to speak again or just not put it down? Thank you. Thank no, you. Sorry, Chair. OK, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, it's pretty much the same as the last one, really. Um, again, we've got an, a, a single entry estate here, but I do know this. So this is probably for a bit of clarification of Claire. It says uh, proposed for a future road into uh, neighbouring land, I think. Which is down the other end of the estate. Um, if she could, if she could just give us some clarification on that. But again, um, looking looking at the site, we've got another five areas where it's um, going to be unadopted in the future. And I'm just wondering as well. Um, I meant to mention this on my on my last uh, time. Was have our bin collectors been involved in 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 do they get involved in anything like this? Because some of them look a bit tight to get any bin collection wagons up. And I'm just thinking of how far some of our bin collectors have to walk, especially on some of the newer states that are going up. I know they're having a few difficulties. Um, that's it, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. As far as I know, refuse and cleansing are always consulted as part of applications. But Claire? Yes, Chair, Refuse team were consulted on this application and raised no objection. OK, thank you. Councillor Lloyd. Thank you, Chair. It's just, just a point um, on these, uh, these roads, service roads or uh, private roads, as they call them. I've got a number of them on the new estate um, in Camp Hill. Um, they're not perfect, um, but um, at the end of the day, they're maintained by um, the um, uh, board and um, bins and things like that are always put out towards the end of uh, the street for collection and taken back in um, when it's done. So there is a number, I suppose there's a number of areas right across the borough have got similar roads to what's been put forward on this proposal. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, and... and just out as a matter of interest, I live on a private estate with private roads. They're not adopted. The lighting's not adopted, but we have a management committee that looks after all that side of things. Um, 
Okay, Claire, anything you wish to finish on? No, I don't think so, Chair, thank you. Okay, in which case, Wendy, can I ask you to go through the um, the votes, uh, the votes, please? Yes, Chair. Please indicate for, against or abstain when your name is called. Councillor Graham. Councillor Graham. I'll come back to Councillor Graham, sir. Chair. Uh, Councillor Hancocks. Four. Councillor Lloyd. Four. Councillor Pandey. Against. Councillor Phillips. Four. Councillor Redkin. Four. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shepherd. Four. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Tandy. Four. Councillor Tromans. Against. Councillor Watkins. Four. Councillor Wilson. Against. Councillor Gran. Councillor Gran. I'm not sure whether anybody else can hear Councillor Gran. I certainly can't. No. Um. He's still listed as being in attendance, so I don't know what's happened there. Um, but the, if you if you agree with my decision, Wendy, uh, the 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 application is approved anyway. Yes, Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That that item approved. We move on to. Item number three, please, Edward Street, Nuneaton. Thank you, Chair. This application is for the retention of a new garage to the side of an existing dwelling. It is 4.9 metres wide, 8.9 metres long, 2.5 metres from the ground to the eaves at the front and 2.6 metres towards the rear. Objections in the form of a petition have been received as detailed on the agenda, raising points such as loss of light, overshadowing and overintensification of its use. In terms of residential amenity, the garage is located in between the application site address number 87 Edward Street and 85 Edward Street. So this is 87, the garage is located in here and that's number 85. The garage is situated on its own plot and is next to an available parking space to the property of number 85. It is only slightly larger than the previous garage which was in its place, which was roughly 2.3 metres in height, whereas the new garage is 2.6 metres. The neighbour at 85 Edward Street has side facing windows which include two habitable room windows. The outbuilding is located, sorry, the garage is located approximately 5.6 metres from these windows. However, it is not considered that the garage affects the immediacy of this property as it is only 10 centimetres taller than what would be allowed under permitted development. It also replaces an existing garage and is not considered that it would create additional significant loss of daylight any more than the previous garage did. No other properties are affected. In relation to visual amenity, the garage faces out onto Edward Street. There are a number of similar outbuildings facing the same direction. There are a mix of different materials and styles used in the street and none match the existing properties that they are related to. Therefore, there is no set street style which the garage would have to be in keeping with. The garage currently consists of breeze blocks and condition one is suggested that it is rendered and painted in the colour to be agreed by the council. The proposal would provide parking for a vehicle to the application site. County highways have no objection. The hard standing front in the garage has also been extended further to the south to around 5.8 metres. County highways consider the hard standard to be suitable for a single vehicle to park off street. They do not consider that the garage would result in an intensification of the use of the access. The recommendation is therefore approval subject to conditions as detailed on the agenda. Thank you, Chair.
<laughs> right. Uh, just before we go on to the um, the speaker list, I saw that Councillor Phillips had put his hand up. Uh, bearing in mind we're not in debate yet, Councillor Phillips. It, it's just to declare an interest, um, Chair, in the fact that a resident did approach me regarding this application. Uh, prior before it became an application, it was more procedural issue, Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I see that on the speaker list we have a Mr. Sheikh to speak, but I don't see him on the attendance list. He, um, it's a written statement that Wendy will be reading, Chair. Right. Uh, the only thing that I've seen is a letter from November to a to a staff member. Is that the one that you're referring to, Wendy? Yes, Chair, that's the one that's uh, been forwarded to me to read out. OK, when, when I looked at it myself, I saw no reference for it to be asked to be presented to the committee. Uh, but on this occasion, I'm happy for you to, to read, it, read it out, please. Thank you, Chair. I am disappointed at the objections, as I do not believe the construction of the garage will have a detrimental impact for any of the neighbours. I would like to start by taking this opportunity to apologise that this is a retrospective application as I misinterpreted the planning requirements following several discussions with my builder. I would also like to take this opportunity to emphasise to the planning committee that I will comply with any decision. I would like to respond to the objections raised. Loss of daylight, the shadow that is created to neighbour's property is in fact from my own home and not from the garage. Size, the replacement garage is indeed larger. This has been made to fit one vehicle comfortably and where I'm able to open car doors on both sides, which was not possible in the old garage. The new garage, as suggested, cannot accommodate two cars. There is some additional space which we will use for storage. I would also like to point out that modern vehicles are larger now, making the previous garage difficult to use when manoeuvring my vehicle inside and opening the doors. Stability of previous garage. The previous garage was constructed to my belief in the 1960s and had served well beyond its prescribed life expectancy. It was structurally unsound and needed to be replaced. Cutting of hedges and trees. I believe it is my prerogative whether to cut any trees or hedges in my garden and how it should be landscaped. There are no tree preservation orders Neither do I live in any sort of conservation area which has limitations on undertaking such work. I also do not believe that it's my responsibility to retain any trees or hedges as a means of providing security to the occupants of number 85 or any other neighbours. It is somewhat confusing that whilst there appears to be an objection to removing a tree or hedge, which were in fact higher than the new garage, yet at the same time objecting to the construction of the garage, which is lower in height. This leads me to believe that this is less about the garage, but more about a personal dislike of my living next door. More disturbance and noise from vehicles, the residents of number 85 have three cars registered to their, their address. Whilst I can reasonably expect visitors, my visitors will not be affecting the wider community by taking up any valuable street parking that I have accommodated for this. Size, Internal dimensions are 4.5 metres width and 8.5 metres length. As previously stated, I'm expecting to be able to park one car and use the remaining space for storage. While it may be possible to park two small cars, I have no intention to change my vehicle to accommodate two cars. It certainly cannot accommodate three cars as per the objection. Other points to consider, noise, I have specifically had the installation of a ro electric roller shutter. It is very quiet in operation, made from foam filled aluminium slats. Thank you, Chair. With an encased internal DC motor mechanism to minimise noise. Overbearing, the size of the garage should not stop or reduce the opportunity number 85 has in using their own garden. The walls are made from concrete blocks and the roof design uses a mixture of steel, corrugated sheets and opaque clear panels for privacy and security. 
I apologise for any additional work that my retrospective application has caused, especially at a time when the pandemic, which I understand has placed a strain on local services and businesses. My intention was never to cause any inconvenience to the local authority or my neighbours. Since the objection was raised, all works to complete the finishes to the front of the garage and wall have been suspended. No further work will commence until we have approval of the planning committee. However, I do not understand how the building of this one garage has caused anyone to object, especially considering that I've spent a significant amount of money on improving the grounds and the property. I believe the provenance of the objections is less to do with building the garage, but more to do with a personal dislike for myself. I'm happy to follow the guidance the planning committee agree to and would like to thank the planning officer and the council officials that have been very fair and extremely helpful and understanding in this matter. I look forward to your decision and will comply with the decision made. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, can I move the recommendation, which is to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed? Is that seconded? Seconded, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Shepherd. Thank you, Chair. It was just to say about a, a contact by a resident. If it could be noted, please. Okay, we'll note we'll note that. Thank you. Is there any other member? No. <coughs> In which case, Wendy, can you just do that vote on this one, please? Yes, Chair. Please indicate for or against or abstain when your name is called. Councillor Gran. Councillor Hancock. For. Councillor Lloyd. For. Councillor Pande. For. Councillor Phillips. For. Councillor Rudkin. For. Councillor Sargent. For. Councillor Shepherd. For. Councillor Smith. For. Councillor Tandy. For. Councillor Tromans. For. Councillor Watkins. For. Councillor Wilson. For. Okay, thanks, Wendy. That application is approved. That takes us, that, fin that finishes the applications for this afternoon. I don't have any items of any other business that are of an urgent nature. So just thank you very much for your attendance. Declare the meeting closed and ask that the live streaming be stopped, please.